Okay, if I could have your attention, I'll call together the coordinating committee meeting of the Harrisburg Area Transportation Study for Friday, June 28, uh, 2019. We'll begin with introductions. I'll start. I am Jeff Hayes from Dolphin County. We'll move to our right, Jim. Uh, Jim Hersler, Cumberland County. Nathan Walker, Pendot District 8. Mike Kaiser, Pendot District 8. Beth Ray, Pendot Central Office. Wayne Martin, City of Harrisburg. Good morning, Skip Memmi, Dolphin County. Oh, you want to still here? Okay. Okay. Oh, um, Roy Gibbler, Camp Hill. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry Bowman, a member of the Cumberland Boulevard Improvement Task Force. Steve Sharmani, WSB. That's Sean Saro from Penn Live. John Pulponi, Office of Senator John DeSanto. Jim Zaborski, a member of the HATS Tech Committee. Jean Chabak, Larson Design Group. Aaron Grumman, Camp Hill Borough Council. Brett Miller, Cumberland Boulevard Improvement Task Force. Get to me, I'm Steve Deck, Tri-County Regional Planning Commission. Andrew Baumberger, Tri-County Regional Planning Commission. Andrew Vizeko, Tri-County Regional Planning Commission. Diane Myers, Tri-County Regional Planning Commission. Steve Naylor, Tri-County. Sean Sanderson, DCED. Good morning, Matt Boyer, Commuter Services, Pennsylvania. Good morning, William Peterson, Center for Community Building. Tom Helm, Harrisburg Bicycle Club. Dan Flint, Lower Allen Township. Okay, welcome, thank you. We do have the coordinating committee meeting minutes from April 26 that we need to adopt. Is there a motion to accept those minutes? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. We also have the tech committee meeting minutes from our June 14th tech committee meeting. Uh, those are for informational purposes only. We'll move down into tip modifications and we'll begin. Okay. I'll, do the, I'll do the administrative actions to begin with. Since the April 26 HATS coordinating meeting, there have been 26 administrative modifications made to the 2019 HATS tip, and I'll go over a few of them. Items 1 and 2, this action is an increase of the final design phase of PA 34 and PA 50 intersection, to match the current estimate. The project consists of safety improvements in Charles Township, including flood traffic, either signalizing the intersection or constructing a roundabout, and the project is scheduled for a rent date of May 7th, 2020. Items 22 and 23, this is an action adding a railway phase of the Blue Ridge Avenue project to the TIP in 2019 in the amount of $10,700 to match the current estimate. This is a bridge replacement on SR 2030, Blue Ridge Avenue, and the Beaver Creek and Lower Paxton Township. Estimated lead date is March 26, 2020. Items 33 to 35, um, this action is shifting funds from the 2019 Franklin tip and the 2019 Lebanon tip to the 2019 Hats tip to help fund the ID1 improvement study in accordance with the previous agreement. Item 74 and 75, this is an action cash flowing the construction phase of Hemp's Road Bridge from 2021 to 2022, increasing by 300,000 to match the fund agreement amount. This is a bridge improvement project on Hemp's Road over a post town run in Silver Spring Township, and the estimated let date for this is March 3rd, 2022. That's all I have. If there's questions on any of the administrative actions, we can try to answer them. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. All right, I'll cover the amendments. So the first amendment in your packet um, is listed as the uh, Fairgrounds Trail project. Uh, this, this amendment is essentially removing $5 million from the Fairgrounds Trail project and adding of uh, Tiger funds and moving it to the B Street project. Um, this is just to align the funding with the correct project description to obligate the funds. So that is the first amendment. Do we, okay. want to, do we want to do all of them? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Um, on the next page, you have a blank page, and then you'll have you'll go into the next amendment, starting with number one. Uh, this this action is actually covering uh, from 2020 to 2023 and 2024 to 2026, and is essentially a cash flow of the construction phase construction phase of the Clay Street Bridge. Um, to align the funding with the current estimated let date of February 1st, 2024. Uh, on the next page, actions five through nine, this, this amendment is programming the preliminary engineering, final design, utility, and construction phase of the Dairy Street Safety Improvement Project in 2020 and 2021. Uh, this is a safety improvement project that came out of the, the Dairy Street Safety Study. Um, 
The next 10 through 13, we're programming the PE uh, utility construction phases of the Paxton Dairy Signal Improvements. Uh, again, this is a project that came out of the Paxton Street RSA and the Dairy Street Safety Improvements. This is going to look to um, improve the signals along that corridor. And it's also in support of the I-83 widening. And that includes the city and the borough, right? Yes. yes. Uh, the next action for the next amendment 14 through 16. Uh, this is programming the PE and the construction phase of the Sycamore Paxton intersection. This was also a uh, recommendation out of the Paxton Street RSA. This is essentially closing off um, that intersection of entering on to Paxton Street. And we'll bring it down to is it 19th Street? 19th. Yeah. So that, that's to improve our safety there at that intersection. Uh, the next one that is in your packet, 17 through 21, the Riverland Safety Improvement. We are actually, we'll table that for the next meeting. Um, we actually discussed it at the tech meeting. We had um, some technical difficulties with uh, getting the study back to Tri-County and we're working to set up a meeting with them um, to further discuss that. So we'll bring that back, hopefully, for the next set of meetings. Um, and then the last one is um, also the, you'll see it's 23 through 26, that's the other part of the McClay Street action. And then on the reverse page is also the Riverlands, which will, that's also tabled. So that is, that is the extent of the amendments. Riverlands is tabled or McClay? Riverlands is, is tabled, the McClay Street action <coughs> we're looking for action on. Okay, is there a motion to approve the uh, tip modifications, noting that 17 to 21 is tabled as well as the Riverlands project? So to be brought up at a later date. Second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move into uh, program and plan updates. We'll start with the bike ped. Andrew? Thank you. The uh, main thing I want to talk about today is why these maps are sitting around the table. Um, it's a kind of an overview of the of the connectivity portion of the of the Carlisle um, redevelopment projects. Um, so Carlisle Borough was was awarded a TAP grant or TAP funds in 2015 for the Carlisle Fairgrounds Trail. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a it's a multi-purpose trail that um, is part of this redevelopment project. Um, it would it connects at B Street if you're looking at the map, B Street South um, to Penn Street and Hanover Street along Fairground Avenue. Uh, the the original tap award was three hundred eighty thousand. In that review round, it was our second highest rated project. The only project that rated higher in that round was um, the Harrisburg Riverwalk, which actually got statewide funding. So it was the, the Fairgrounds Trail was a very well reviewed and everybody kind of agreed on funding. Um, so I was contacted by borough officials and a consultant working on behalf of the, of the borough that they did it, that a significant portion of the funds that were awarded were not needed to complete what was the original scope of work and they were looking to expand the scope of work so that they could use that original funding amount. Um, to, after some discussion, they needed 105,000 of the 380 to complete the, the work on Fairgrounds Trail. So they wanted to transfer an additional, uh, not an additional, sorry, the 275 of that to sidewalk and pedestrian improvements along B Street that would actually, again, looking at the, at the map, that would actually connect the tire and wheel site to the fairground trail. So it essentially we're getting more, more, of, the same, more of the same type of improvements for the same amount of money. Um, so because the, the requested scope would not have negatively impacted their initial application, um, it, it's our opinion that this should, that and the opinion of the tech committee, they actually moved and, and recommended that this be approved. I don't think we need any official 
I don't think technically we would need any official action, but I think just moving forward for transparency's sake, I think it'd be good to, to official to have some action from this committee to just uh, approve the expansion of the scope. Is there a motion to accept the uh, the new scope of work for the Carlisle Fairgrounds Trail project? I make a motion to approve the expansion of scope of the Fairgrounds project. There's a second. <coughs> Any further discussion? Did, All those? Yeah, Jim. Did we get an answer to the question as to what? Yes, what I think it was. I think it was an issue of they have so many pots of money they're pulling from. I, I think they. It, the original request was probably more than they had officially need, had initially needed. Although, Brian, you might be able to speak a little more. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Brian Emberg of HRG. We're a program manager for uh, the Burrow. And um, uh, the, uh, the part of this overall urban redevelopment, there's a private developer redoing the um, uh, crossing the fairground site, and they agreed to include part of the trail in their development. So that cut back on the scale of what the original application was. So they wanted to repurpose that extra fund, as Andrew pointed out, over to connect over to the uh, Tyronville site. Okay. So, so it wasn't that the original estimate was out of whack no. it was that somebody else stepped Bam. up and paid for part of it yep. okay that that's that's a good answer <laughs> <laughs> and just for clarity there there were no projects like on the waiting list either so this is doesn't harm somebody else no it does not. <laughs> any other questions all those in favor say aye aye aye, aye. opposed motion carried thank you that's all I, unless anyone has any questions, that's all I have. We'll move into uh, safety. Uh, and Andrea? Uh, thank you. Uh, not much on the safety front. Our next Tim Team meeting is on August 8th at the Turnpike Commission. Um, I'll, I'll just add two. We have two studies that we've uh, recently conducted along the lines of safety. So I'll, I'll ask that we cover both of them under this particular line item. I'll, I'll start with the Camp Hill to Capital study that uh, roughly speaking a year ago, so we authorized this uh, study of safety conditions um, basically from 581 or from the Camp Hill Shopping Center uh, the whole way across the river up Forster Street and then uh, turn right on 7th and go out state uh, was the study area. Uh, we've conducted that and distributed a copy to all the members uh, for them to look at. Uh, I had received a uh, couple of comments um, about a week or so ago that I, I started a response to comments. I will admit that I've yesterday afternoon I received a, a couple of additional ones uh, from Camp Hill Borough that I've been unable to incorporate into the response to comments that we were going to append. But my, I, I can say this with the comments that we received from the borough, none of them we're negative in terms of the short-term solutions that we're looking to take action on immediately. They're all for longer-term recommendations that will be part of the process moving forward. So I'm just going to suggest if you're willing to take action on the plan that we adopt the plan with the understanding that these additional comments will be incorporated into what will be Appendix B, the outreach summary, um, so that they'll be there as we move into the longer-term solutions. But this would enable us to start working with the district on the short-term recommendations of the study uh, while not really losing anything. So that that's my suggestion for your consideration. Any questions? So is there a motion to accept the recommendation? Yeah, sorry, I'll make the motion to accept the recommendation. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's important that we get moving as quickly as possible uh, you know in, in taking advantage of what we're talking about three hundred thousand dollars in funding that's available to at least address if you will the low-hanging fruit mm -hmm. to help address what is a serious you know a safety issue with respect to uh, the whole core of Camp Hill bypass down to 581 and, and the 32nd Street uh, I appreciate all the comments that, that we've received and uh, I'm glad that we're incorporating all of that and we will you know consider that as the 
as the improvements move forward. So, is, uh, is the project manager on this the district? Who's it, going to? It's a tip lineup. We did a we did a Camp Hill to Capital implementation tip item when we started the study. So, so I assume we, we definitely we, want to sign a PM until there's projects coming. Correct. Yeah. So, but you're going to be taking the lead on that. That would be my understanding. Yeah, so we will work yeah, with them yeah. continually through the process. Yeah. Anything else? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion carried. Okay. This, the second, yeah, the second study that's, that's under consideration, we, meaning HATS, um, coordinated a study that basically relates to autonomous and connected vehicles moving forward. The idea, the study focused on the communications uh, equipment that's necessary to enable things like traffic signals to speak to connected cars as this technology comes out. So basically, the, the meat of the study is um, an understanding of the technology, the requirements, and then looking at, a pri we did a prioritization uh, system for the network, looking at basically signalized intersections that have a number of crashes relating to things like red light running or bicycle pedestrian crashes at them. And throughout the district, we ended up with a prioritized network where these investments would make the most sense. Uh, with the idea being that as we do, as we program projects to improve or upgrade traffic signals, those kind of things, for what was given as uh, unit costs of as low as $25,000 if you're only doing one, that you can make that investment and take advantage of that technology as it comes, in, comes to fruition throughout the area. So, um, like I said, all of the, the participants in the study were Federal Highway, PennDOT Central Office, PennDOT District, and all of the MPOs in District 8. Um, we coordinated the study, so HATS would be the first entity to adopt. Um, we will then reflect some of this prioritization in our long-range plan as a follow-on to how we identified this, you know, the potential impacts of this technology in the plan itself. This kind of adds some meat to those bones. Um, and then there are a handful of the other MPOs who are doing their long-range plans right now. They would be reflecting this, these findings in their plans as they develop. Um, and we'll be working with PennDOT and others to replicate this effort across the Commonwealth. So um, I thought it was a, it turned out to be a very effective study. We had some very good input from all the different levels of participants in it. I think it's something that really provides us a fairly inexpensive tool as we move forward to start preparing for technology that can make the roads much safer. But any questions? On the statewide, who's coordinating that? Again, is that the commission then or is that? We um, will be making presentations at planning partners meetings and working with, there's, the state has a, I forget what Mark Kopko's official title really is, but it's, he's a special assistant for transformative technologies or something like that. We've been working with the, with the secretary's lead person on this to, for him to help push it out statewide. So it's going to be coordinated by one of the deputies, not by Correct. the commission. Got it. Correct. Okay. Any other questions? All right, we'll move on. Uh, project development. Well, can we can we take an action to what accept? Do you need? Yeah, I th I think it would be nice to officially adopt the study. Uh, moving forward. And you're forward. ready to do that. Yes. Okay. Has, has the technical committee adopted it? The technical committee recommended adoption based on the presentation that was made um, by Michael Baker. <laughs> Correct. Sorry, I should have pointed that out, Lane. Okay. Is there a motion? I'll move. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Thank you. Okay, that's it. Pipeline. I'm done. Pipeline. Okay. Um, I'm taking, trying to take Casey's place today. Uh, there's nothing new that has been added to the tracking table uh, this month. Just to let you know, you may be, you may remember that we went through a process of contacting each of the project sponsors who had 
uh, suggested something onto the, into the pipeline uh, over the years. All of those contacts have been made. We have received a handful of direct responses of those. I would say that all of those thus far have been positive. Nobody objected to the updated ranking or information. Some asked some questions. Uh, I'd say that uh, process is still ongoing because we haven't closed a comment period per se. Um, at, at a future meeting, we would be asking uh, to formalize the pipeline with all of those, all of the projects as, as submitted once we comfortable that we've heard from everybody we're going to hear from. Um, but so, other so our target for that's what September. Yeah, I would I would say we're gonna we could try for September okay. uh, to formalize the pipeline. Uh, but like I said, everyone has been contacted. I would say a half dozen or so have replied to my awareness. Any uh, questions? The only other thing I'll add to pipeline an issue that that Wayne brought up probably at the last meeting, which was the federal aid, locally owned federal aid roads and the data that's available kind of out of the fed, out of the local level and, and that being kind of apples to oranges from the data that's available on the state owned uh, network. Just to let everybody know, we have been working on that issue, working with uh, primarily PennDOT's central office to get all of the data that they have for the locally owned federal aid roads um, and when we started asking these questions it kind of raised a couple more questions so I'm just going to say we're continuing to work with that so that in the future we can work with the municipalities to make sure they're providing the comparable data so that we can consider uh, improvements to that portion of the network comparably to how we do the state network if that makes sense. So just a, that's just an informational thing to let you know that it's an ongoing process. On that, and just because I don't know the, the road system, I know the bridges because counties have to. Right. Aren't the municipalities, they're getting like refused for those roads, right? They get, they aren't, get they th aren't they required to make reports based upon that funding? Oh, you mean of the improvements that yeah. they, yes. But what the question was, for instance, there's a number of factors that go in, and, and Nate and I have had these several of these discussions, but there are a number of factors that go into the state's decision-making process when they are doing resurfacing or reconstruction of roadways, IRI and a number of others. Mm -hmm. That information, and this is what Wayne brought up, that's not fully available on the locally owned network. The same data is not available. The state, a couple of I think it was a couple of years ago, maybe, or at least a year ago, reached out to municipalities asking for some of this data to make it more comfortable. Didn't, didn't get a great reaction to that. Um, so that was the concern that was raised, is it, at least try to get the same data. But that's uh, why I was at, isn't that required to be reported? So we don't, we, so for the city of Harrisburg, roads like Second Street, Market Street, right. that are city owned, that are uh, federal eligible roads, we have the same data that PENDA has because we did we did pavement condition analysis surveys of the of those roads. So we can provide the same data that PENDA. What PENDA had requested as part of the liquid fuel stuff is age of age of the pavement yeah, right. and um, pavement um, composition. So is it a concrete base or asphalt base? Those types of things. It's not. They never asked us for to provide the same data that PENDA is providing for the. For the PennDOT roads, and so when you run through this uh, spreadsheet ranking system, a state, a city, or a municipal eligible road will not receive the same um, ranking as a, as a state eligible, a state owned, uh, an SR, if you will. And so, how are we improving the system? What, what we found is, so far, IRI is a factor that when you go into the state's, uh, they call it RMS, mm -hmm. that locally, ro locally owned road IRIs don't even show up. They just show up as other. But PennDOT did have data, IRI on local roads. They initially told me that that data should be only as old as two years, but when we looked at the database that they 
submitted, much of that data was older than two years, and they weren't sure if it was that the, the year was incorrect or if in fact the data was that old. So they're kind of looking into things like that. Um, and then, as, as Wayne indicated, there's a couple of fields that aren't part of, of the traditional uh, RMS that are considered this. So we're trying to find out what missing pieces of data there are and how old the IRI data is if there's a need to update that information on the locally owned network so that everything's even. Yeah, I, I would just add, this, this isn't a crystal ball. Uh, this is really yeah. just a, an indicator. Yeah, right. Uh, what, what's missing from all this is you may have a roadway with uh, poor, RI, or, uh, poor IRI that may remain the same for many years uh, versus a, a roadway for, for, for a number of reasons that, uh, you know, the IRI could, could quickly, uh, uh, you know, get away from you obviously traffic volumes, things like that. Uh, you know, I, I, I think Wayne and, and folks in Wayne's position also look at, you know, sewer facility upgrades infrastructure that kind of trip that trigger of, you know, hey, we're doing some investment over here, it makes sense, you know, and, and PennDOT does that as well. So um, it, it's really a, a, an indicator for us. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, if you have the network that Pennsylvania has on, on state roadways, uh, I don't think you're going to have that data every two years. That's, yeah. that's a big lift. Right. Uh, I'd be shocked. Yeah. I, I was surprised when I was first told that. Yeah. Well. I was just thinking if, if it's really a matter of doing some data collect, collecting, maybe we change the forms that are filed with liquid fuels and maybe we can just, you know, if you add another fuel, maybe it gets recorded that way. Right. Could, could be. Right. Just taking a look at coordinating those yep. reporting forms and. Yeah. And, you know, and in that case, it's really reaching out to the consulting engineers who, yeah. and not in all cases, and, you know, in the cities, but in a lot of cases, it's consulting engineers putting that together for municipalities and letting them know the new reporting items that we want. And again, I probably don't have to say this, but I will. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, uh, there's not enough money to keep the interstates where we need them. So if you start drilling down to a the lowest network that we have and the local network that we have, we all know what the challenges are. It's, it's funding anyway. So, but also looking ahead to that magical day where there is more funding, <laughs> um, if it's hard to get the right funding if you don't have the right data. Exactly. If you have the right yeah, exactly. data, then you can make a stronger argument for right. absolutely the funding. So agree, hundred percent. Okay, I think we beat that one up. <coughs> Anything else? No, that's it under pipeline. You don't want to stir any more pots. I do not. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> we'll move into status reports. Who might you know, start that? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, again, just. Uh, highlight some of the uh, ongoing projects that we have here in the Hats region. Uh, made myself a note here so I didn't forget. Uh, uh, you, you may be aware of this, maybe not. Uh, our AD for construction, Randy Stout, retired uh, middle of April. Uh, you know, he, he's a fixture there in our construction unit for many years. I think he had about 30 years of penned up. Uh, we're going through the process now of, uh, you know, posting and interviewing for that position. So maybe by the next uh, HATS meeting, I'll, I'll have a name for you there. Uh, similarly, uh, prior to uh, Randy leaving, Greg Penny also retired. Uh, Greg, uh, again, another fixture in District 8 for many, many years. Uh, uh, maybe I'm a little biased here, but I'm bringing them up because they're direct reports for the DE. So, you know, I, I got some uh, vacancies and things like that that we're moving ahead on. So, uh, again, probably have uh, new point of contacts for you uh, by the next meeting, if, if not prior to that. Um, again, I'll, I'll start in Cumberland County, and I made myself a note here. Uh, we're we're going to add uh, for next time the Oars Bridge. I know that's a local lead project, but that's a pretty important project for the area. So uh, I'll have our guys work with uh, locals. Uh, you know, Brian will we'll get just a status on that so we can kind of kind of keep track of that job. Uh, Erford Road Bridge, uh, again, that, that job's uh, certainly uh, right in the radar here. Uh, you know, the capital, very close. Uh, job's going pretty well. Um, again, that was a design-build project, so uh, while we had bid the project uh, some time ago, 
you know the physical work and things like that haven't started till uh, you know last year. So uh, right now we're looking at a uh, completion date of October 2019 for that. So uh, that job will be wrapped up here by the end of the year. And again, for everyone that may not be familiar with it, uh, it's a whole new superstructure. We're going to have three lanes going across it. Uh, versus the two and some adjustments uh, were needed then for the uh, for the ramps and uh, I think for the development that's taking place there uh, and, and again just the overall traffic growth that's going to help us a little bit down the line with the uh, signal there at the 21st bypass uh, you know it's going to give another opportunity for uh, that, that whole campus area so to speak hospitals a number of offices in there so uh, uh, we feel it's a pretty good project uh, 74 over Latorch Spring, uh, yeah, it's really uh, early yet, uh, water and sewer line relocations. Uh, we're going to be working in a phase and then it'll be a, uh, a winter shutdown before we get into the second phase on that. Uh, so we'll be back out there again after this year, uh, probably starting in April 2020. Um, you know, a couple jobs that are uh, underway, we had some resurfacing work uh, in Cumberland County, 114 in 2011. I believe I have 2011 as Marble Street, uh, 114 of course is Market. Uh, again, uh, th that work will be wrapped up here uh, later this summer, uh, probably not too far out. Uh, again, I always try to remind everybody my report here that I get from construction is usually about two weeks uh, dated till we, till we get to the HATS meeting here, so uh, that job's about wrapped up. Similarly, we have the uh, Cumberland 83 project, uh, it was just a short section out there. Uh, that work started here just earlier in the year. Uh, we had a little bit of rough spot there when we did some concrete patching. Uh, but right now, again, we've had some areas where we had the bituminous binder leveling on, so that uh, that's getting a lot more manageable in terms of uh, traffic control. And uh, that contract work will be completed here in September. Um, Creekview Road interchange again. Uh, you know, that's a that's about a. Uh, 3.6 million dollar project, um, uh, Creek V Road, of course, in, in 581. Um, again, that project will be completed uh, this calendar year. Uh, currently, we're installing some drainage uh, excavation for stormwater detention basins. Uh, you know, things of that nature on the project. Uh, the I-83 East Shore overpasses; those jobs are essentially done. There's just a tiny little bit of work there that. Uh, uh, new enterprise and, and our construction staff's working through um, and and of course uh, you know on the heels of that then we have uh, I-83 East Shore section one um, uh, I, I don't I have about three pages here of updates uh, uh, I'm not gonna go through all those because uh, it breaks down the status of each retaining wall, each bridge, the only thing I would offer for this group is just drive through. Uh, that is how a construction job should look. Uh, Ekman has put a lot of resources on it and uh, you know to date uh, I, I think they're doing a fantastic job and again just to remind everybody it's you're, you're building you're building this roadway uh, and trying to manage uh, 80 plus thousand ADT each day and uh, including the interchanges which again Union Plaza Colonial Road I mean uh, 22 uh, you know a lot of activity up there so again uh, just kudos to the contractor on that similarly uh, Hemp Brothers has, has done a great job on the, the 300 project um, 300 project is very challenging in terms of uh, these major phases where you're asking the contractor to get a whole lot of work done uh, in one construction season so we can get back to kind of normal traffic pattern for the winter. Uh, you know, last year with all the rain, I think we actually had one day remaining in the contract, which is really, really tight. So, uh, but again, they're, they're doing a great job. Uh, a lot of that work will be wrapped up uh, again, uh, probably try to get out of the existing uh, express lane, local lane set up, uh, you know, by the end of uh, uh, this calendar year, uh, hopefully not too far into uh, late into late November and December, and then there'll be some work remaining, uh, you know, the following uh, a year on that. Um, had some work there on 22. Uh, that work's about wrapped up as well. 
Uh, some of that was emergency work the year before that uh, we've done uh, closer to the uh, 325 interchange. Uh, and then we also have our project in Perry County, the 11 and 15 uh, project. Uh, I believe uh, that's that's Penzi Supplies working on that. I believe I reported out last time that we actually uh, uh, made a request and were approved to extend the limits of the project by not quite a mile, but it's about 0.7 miles. Uh, so again, right now there's uh, you know some a lot of different activity going on, but we expect that uh, that job will be completed and wrapped up uh, before the end of summer here. So, anyone has any questions, be happy to answer. Any questions? All right, thank you. Thank you. I don't see anybody from the commission. So we'll that. No one from the highway. North Federal Highway, no. Uh, North Cat, North Sarah. SRTP? Sounds like you're getting to the bottom of the barrel, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, just a couple updates on behalf of Commuter Services. <coughs> Quick, we had our uh, month of May with Motorless May, formerly known as Bike Month. Did promotions with that uh, through the month of May. Beat to Heat, formerly known as Tri Transit Month, was done in June. That's wrapping up now. Uh, real good promotions with our local transits. Uh, month of May, we had a Cumberland uh, Try It Day with the county. Some names of other employees you're going to recognize from the area, uh, UPMC, uh, United Foods, UPS, Comcast, Judas, uh, Thermo Fisher, and the Allen Distribution, companies that we've had our outreach staff in working with their employees to notify them of how our program works. Uh, we did Amtrak uh, try it days as well in Harrisburg, E-Town, and Lancaster. Very beneficial. Found, uh, I think it was 32 new trackers that are actually using the Commute PA program which is my segue into reminding everyone that that Commute PA app is out there. It allows you to track your trips and then tie into uh, about 2,400 different rewards and benefits on the back end of that. Anyone who's familiar with an entertainment book that you might have bought in your local community, every single benefit or coupon that's in that book is on our app. It's, a, uh, it's an exclusive deal that we have with them to, to go back to commuters who are looking for that incentive to try and find a reason why so they might want to try an alternative mode. The last thing I'll leave you with, we reported back in August about uh, the Best Workplaces for Commuters award recipients from this area, Comcast, DHL Supply, and WebF, uh, Web, excuse me, WebFX. It's going to be a, uh, an event to honor those people and our star award recipients in August. It's going to hold that up at the um, Ant Antique Automobile Club of America in Hershey. So it's going to be a neat event. Those of you who have uh, received invitations before will get those again, and we'll honor those uh, businesses that reach that very stringent threshold for TDM excellence. So with that, I'll let the meeting move along. Unless there's any questions. Any questions, Mr. Chairman? DCED, Sean? Thank you, no. Township, where you're at there? To come. All right, uh, we'll move over to legislative reports. Uh, just to uh, bring up the subject came up, I guess, in the committee meeting about Sand Beach Road and I think it's South Meadow. Uh, in East Hanover. We've received inquiries on that as well. So anything going on short term or you know, longer term studies or improvements, we could be kept in the loop. That would be appreciated. We'll certainly do that. Nothing has moved forward yeah, I agree. yet as a result of some of those discussions, <laughs> but we'll, we'll keep you informed. Thanks. Anybody else? Okay, local reports. We'll start out with Wayne. City. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. A uh, couple updates. Uh, Her Street uh, Pedestrian Access Route Project, which was funded by TAP Funds, um, we did the walkthrough this week. It's it's essentially completed. Um, so if you haven't seen it, maybe take a, a ride up here at Her Street between Cameron and 15th, ADA ramps, um, bus stop uh, improvements, and, and the like. There, the quad at 15th near the Bethesda Mission, some of that uh, remaining work is happening under HOP. Uh, with the youth center so once that's complete the, you know the full scope of the project will be realized I think but uh, the river walk uh, I guess thanks to PennDOT wanting a bridge uh, 81 bridge work done the contractor has stepped up and is uh, down there pouring at least a dozen trucks a day of concrete so they want to be poured out by uh, 4th of July which is a good you know for those that want to come down to the river walk and, and Front Street uh, on the 4th of July to enjoy the fireworks. Um, that's also a TAP funded project. Uh, July 18th at 6 p.m., uh, the city will 
have a, a public um, meeting on the Second Street Two Way project. That's at Hack Midtown Campus. Again, it's July 18, 6 p.m. Uh, more to more to follow on that. The last public meeting had over 100 um, 100 members of the public uh, comments and stuff. And so the concepts and the feedback from that last public meeting were turned into two uh, feasible concepts for uh, additional uh, comment. And that, that's all I have. Thank you. Any questions, Wayne? Any other municipal reports? Okay. Trick County. Uh, the Regional Connections Program is officially coming to a close. Today is the end date of the last active contract in that program. Uh, that program started in 2012, and over the duration of that time, um, 26 planning projects were completed. Um, and over a million dollars invested in uh, projects that are linking land use and transportation planning. Um, shortly um, coming before this board for some action is the new structured program for our regional connections, which hopefully will appear on the 2021 20, TIP um, for a, a designated amount of funding each year uh, to continue that pro program not only just for planning, but into construction as well. So it's not going away, it's just being reformatted. Right. Yeah. yeah, just to add to that, you may remember uh, the tech committee formed a tip or an RTP implementation work group. That's where we're starting with the kind of the format and, and procedures behind this new program. We provided the draft kind of how the program guidelines to that committee, uh, opened that discussion at the tech committee meeting um, whether or not they wanted to recommend action on it. They wanted some additional time to offer comment um, so that, as Diane indicates, you know, maybe in September we'll be back having had a, a recommendation to uh, approve the guidelines. There'll still be some things that need to be done to get that uh, program fully operational, um, but you may be hearing uh, some recommendations coming in September uh, that are originating through that work group. Any questions? Anything else to be brought up by any of the board members? Sean? I, I know I said I didn't have anything, but I wanted to wait until someone else maybe mentioned it. The uh, Green Belt extension on Front Street is extraordinary. If you haven't walked it or ridden it, it's not quite done. I've ridden through it several times. Uh, just the improvements to the street alone make it worthwhile, but uh, it's actually a circumstance, it's an event that uh, demonstrates how much it was needed, what local funding is doing for the character of a neighborhood and a community. Cutting down probably a billion trees was probably the best thing that could have happened along that stretch because it was beyond overgrown. It was jungle-like to the, to the extent that it was unusable. You couldn't see the river, you couldn't actually access the boat ramp. Uh, it was extremely, extremely unsafe for anything except cars doing 80 miles an hour. And that's not a joke, coming off of the interstate and straight down Front Street through neighborhoods. Uh, if you want to know what your money is doing, that's what's happening. The Green Belt is growing and expanding, and uh, if you want, we have a member of the Harrisburg Bicycle Club here who may be able to speak to it more eloquently than I. But it's um, an extraordinary addition to the quality of life. Uh, on, on any given day, you're going to improve your day by using that. I have one last thing to <laughs> offer today. And, and Beth kind of ref referred to this, I think, when she was making her uh, amendments. She, she was noting that there were some funds transferred from Franklin and Lebanon uh, to HATS to provide for the I-81 improvement strategy that we've discussed uh, to take place uh, earlier this week. I got the paperwork from PennDOT Central Office officially moving those funds uh, into our program uh, effective July 1st. So we have actually, I've issued the paperwork uh, notice to proceed to to Michael Baker International to start that effort 
Monday. So to let you know that that is, uh, will immediately be underway. I've reached out to the district to talk about setting up a kind of a kickoff meeting to get that work started in earnest, but it will be underway here July 1st. So we'll be given regular updates as that yeah. moves forward, but just to let you know, it's, it is about to start. And, and the area that it's going to cover is? Mason-Dixon line up to actually where uh, 78 goes out of Lebanon County. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. That's the, so roughly 100 miles, I think. Yeah. It's probably the biggest chunk of 81 that's going to be in one group together and, you know, the coordination between there. So this is a good move. Looking forward to it. Anything from any of our guests? Yes. Hi. Um, <clears throat> I just want to say thank you so much to everybody, and especially this, this body, HATS, tri County for approving the Campbell Capital Corridor Study. Um, it's just greatly, greatly appreciated by the Covenant Boulevard <coughs> Task Force folks and um, several borough residents. Um, and thank you again, Steve, and and Mike Kaiser for coordinating um, so many different things, and for Gene Jayback. Really, really appreciate everything you did to help move this forward. And thank you, thank you, thank you, Jim, for taking my call, <laughs> taking my call, and uh, guiding me through this process. Cannot appreciate everything you did. Thank you, thank you all. It's Brett's group that provided the transportation cookies that, that everybody gets to enjoy on your way out. Anyone else? Yeah, we had a, yes. uh, just an update on, we had a uh, covered bridge that was burnt a number of years ago, three, four years ago probably now, Delville Bridge. <clears throat> We're going to have that uh, ribbon cutting, uh, I think it's on the 14th of July coming up here. Uh, Pannoni Associates, our uh, uh, inspector, uh, carried through with the uh, bridge work on that. And uh, So you rehab the bridge? Pardon? You rehab the bridge? Do you have the bridge? No. no you rehab it. Have. Is it been rehabbed? Rehabbed. Oh, yeah, just about completely. Yeah. yeah. It burnt. Actually, it turned out we thought we could use the original arches and stuff, and they were so badly burnt at the joints that we had to replace them. It was yeah. cut, cut by a Lycoming Supply. Took care of that, and they just finished up the standing seam roof on it and had the uh, red stain put on the uh, bridge. So we, we got a final. We're going to have a ribbon cutting and a final inspection. At, um, <coughs> I think it's third to fourteenth. I don't have my calendar here my phone so but uh, it's nice to have that it's going to be open and then uh, people using the uh, Sherman's Creek we, we, they'll be able to cross the bridge and there's a picnic area and stuff there to get to get uh, canoes in and out and so on there so we had we had the uh, county had uh, insurance through CCAP and it was about a million dollar project uh, that uh, carried it through otherwise we'd have, we could not have repaired that yeah. and, it, and it's kind of ironic because you're about three or four months ago, uh, an old informant of mine gave me a name and I turned it over to the state police and the suspect is in prison so the interview should be easy. <laughs> but I don't think uh, anything's gonna, any reimbursement's gonna come out of it knowing the famous situation. So maybe that'll happen. Yeah. Ryan, did you have something? Uh, yeah, um, Mike had mentioned uh, Orr's Bridge uh, uh, on Cumberland County's website through the Planning Commission. There's going to be bi-weekly updates of that uh, project. That's uh, the county's most heavily traveled bridge. has about 10,000 vehicles a day, so we have 10,000 sidewalk inspectors driving in commenting, so we thought it would be important to get the information out there. Uh, utilities have been relocated, uh, clearing rubbing has been completed, and uh, so we're going to soon start to see some heavy operations. That bridge would be built immediately downstream from uh, the existing bridge so the traffic can be maintained through majority of the construction. There will be about a month detour when the tie-ins are completed. But, uh, uh, and I think uh, Kirk has arranged for it. One of the businesses has a webcam up there and he's put a link through the county's website that you can see a live feed of the construction. But that should make the job easy, Mike, to give you updates. <laughs> <laughs> Might want to save me some work, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else? I well, hope everybody has a safe and enjoyable fourth. Um, be safe while you're out there traveling, and uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So, second. So, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned.